Alrighty guys, thank you again for joining us today. Let's go ahead and get back into the Jar Design A340. As you guys saw last night, uh, previously on our channel, we did do a quick little review of the fly-by-wire A340. Uh, some of the things that I heard in the comment section that everybody wanted to see was a more in-depth system review. So because of that situation, and because we want to see a more in-depth system review, we're going to go ahead and do a quick couple of VFR flights around Phoenix area. Um, first flight will be from Sky Harbor down to Goodyear, KGYR. And we'll go from KGYR over to Scottsdale. Um, right now, Scottsdale in real life is closed, but we can still attempt a landing there in virtual reality. As we continue to move forward, we'll go ahead and take off from Scottsdale and possibly head to Flagstaff. During these flights, it'll be completely VFR, so I'll be flying by hand. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the systems, we'll take a look at the MCDU more, and get a feel for what we can accomplish with the Jar Design E340 today. I hope that you guys are having a great weekend, and I hope that you guys continue to have a great weekend as we uh, move forward through into August. Man, time flies as we're having fun, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's take a look back at the exterior model again. Oof. Let's take a look at this exterior model here. Pop up here. As we can tell, we um, the exterior model is still really nice, in my opinion. Of course, some of these textures, what we noticed last night was that these textures out here definitely need some work when the engines are spooling up. There is some minor touch-ups that need to be done to some of these textures, but overall, uh, we're doing a good job on the exterior. Can't say the same. We can't say the same for the interior work of this airplane, but you know how it is. Sometimes you get what you get. For sixty dollars, this plane definitely comes with a lot of features. And as we continue forward, we'll go ahead and go back to our in-depth review of the systems, which brings us back to the cockpit. We'll go ahead and cut to the chase and just kind of skim me on through here. And go to the front, take a look at that again. Beautiful, beautiful airplane. And we are back into the cockpit, guys. Imagine that. Quick one, two, and we're back in. The one thing I like to point out is this lovely feature as I have the TCA side stick, this feature that moves back and forth is really wonderful. Can't say that. I'm not not impressed. And now let's go up here. Still got the wonderful sounds in this. Some of the sounds can definitely use some touch-ups, but so far so good. Let's go ahead and get the batteries on, battery one and two. Go ahead and get all these ported over really quick. And we'll go ahead and turn our beacon light on. Our APU master switch, we'll go ahead and start the APU up. Like I said before, um, we'll go ahead and do a more in-depth systems review with you. So we'll bypass all these wonderful features that I would like to show you, but I showed you in the previous video. And we'll go ahead and just get straight to the chase and to the fly-by-wire systems. Now, Jar Design did input fly-by-wire systems, and fly-by-wire basically is a nice feature in the sense that you have more control of your airplane. Of course, a lot of people would say that it, it is a nice feature in, in totality. Some things that I really like about the cockpit so far are just the knobs, the sounds of the knobs. Everything sounds very much realistic very nice very crisp sounding we do have this wonderful backlights that we can put on here you know so it should say the AP is available yep we got everything going there we'll go ahead and call for fuel we'll go ahead and load uh, about 
seventeen thousand kilos into the airplane. Wonderful, wonderful, amazing. Now, one thing I would like to point out is this MCDU menu here. Or not the MCDU, yeah, the MCDU. Sorry, I apologize. What I'd like to point out, hey, thanks for uh, coming into the stream. Appreciate it. If you guys see anything or you want to see anything more, let me know. Um, going back into this menu here, we do have our flight plans. As you can kind of tell when I press these buttons, we have both of them. So both of these are not independent they are connected mcdus currently hopefully in the next feature we'll hopefully see uh, jar design with an update that makes these independent but for right now if you plan on flying it with smart copilot or anything at this time i don't suggest using this plane <coughs> as it might become a problem excuse me when we go into the flight deck here we can definitely see some lovely in it references the pages are wonderfully modeled but for sure the MCDU not being independent is a big issue now as we continue throughout here I need to actually align our, our lovely adheres here let me get these all on for us so we can hurry up the process and get to VFR flying we won't be setting up any of the autopilot features, nothing will get set up here. We won't even set up a route, we'll just do direct. So we'll go direct KGYR just so I have a waypoint. Missed data, hold on. KGYR. Okay, direct two. It's probably what I have to type in KG R direct to. Okay, guess we won't be setting that up because apparently that feature is not possible with that. Guess I have to have a flight plan to make that work. That's a little bit strange, but hey, you know, you get what you can you can get. Go ahead and take a look at the conditioners. So I love that it shows all the conditioners and everything part of the aircraft. I do like that I can see these menus here. The bleeds I like as well. Pressurization systems. It looks like they did model everything definitely kind of spot on. Um, some problems I have are the glare. You got a little bit of some glare here, but it's nice to have some glare, but it, this kind of looks a little bit like fake glare. I don't like when they start adding frosting, frosting fate, fake glare. It doesn't make it any better. So we do have Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, wonderful, electric, wonderful, hydraulics, looks like we don't have anything going right now because we don't have the engines. Our APU, conditioner again, our doors, wheels, heat and everything about our wheels, and our flight control surfaces. So we'll go back to, actually I'll keep it on APU. So in the next couple of minutes, or, yeah, yep, there it is. It's up. I was hoping that it would be faster than that. So if we come back up here, as I said before, I do like some of the sounds that they added, where they have these, these crisper sounding situations here. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for the systems, the fly-by wire system. So let's go ahead and hurry up, get through the cockpit. I do like that my TCA side stick, as I move, this moves with it. Perfect animations, wonderful. Avi tab in this, it works really well. Go ahead and power it off. I don't need Avi tab right now. Let's go ahead and call for a pushback. And let's get on a VFR flight really fast and test out this fly-by-wire system. Because that's what we're here for. Don't know why it's already pretty planned, but we'll go ahead and do it again and hit enter. Cockpit plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, we'll call you through the menu when we're ready, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm ready, so... 
Background and cockpit. Tow is driving up. Alrighty guys, like I said, this is going to be more in-depth in terms of systems. I'm not going to be showing much of the cockpit off too much. I'm definitely not going to be showing much of the cabin in the back off in this uh, stream. My last stream that I had, unfortunately, did not get saved to Twitch. So if you missed that stream, I apologize. There will be more streams with this wonderful airplane. Um, just probably won't be any more reviews on this airplane as I move on to the next plane that I want to review in the next coming days. We will be streaming a lot of our reviews Saturday and Sunday, uh, possibilities on Wednesday. So I will definitely update a schedule for everyone. That way everyone knows when we get there. I did add a few things. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Alrighty, so she is connecting us right now. I did update a few things to my channel. We did get a new profile picture, uh, thanks to the wonderful designer, I mean. As we continue to move forward, I hope that Jar Design sees these streams or sees these videos soon. I will understand that I do appreciate his products and that I hope that we can learn something from them. As you can tell in the top corner here on the left, I do have my frames. They will continue to stay there. That way I can show you guys what frames I'm getting and where. And my system is currently a 1660 Super overclocked so edition with a 9th gen i3 processor. Brake. We'll go ahead and release the pro parking brake so we can be on our way. Starting pushback and you may start engine. All right, we'll go ahead and start engine one. Oh, I don't have my bleed air on. That would that would kind of help, wouldn't it? Iris in a line. All right. We got to go back to the init page here. We'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Hopefully you guys will get something out of this today, a little bit more of a real based review on the systems uh, versus the whole external internal the whole shebang in one go this will be just a systems overview like I said so far it looks like everything is good we are hopefully gonna be in a veil and we can move on to the next one I think we're solid actually. We'll move on to engine four. We'll start engine four. And they are pushing us back. Hi, Texaco. I do like this panel here. Everything modeled really nicely. It doesn't look too ugly, they don't look too unsharp. Everything looks very on point. Yeah, I didn't give my irises enough time to align, but, you know, what can I say? We're on a VFR hunt. Go ahead and start engine two. Now feel free, like I said, to ask me anything in the comments section. Um, if you have any comments that you want to make or if you have any questions that you want to ask, I can try to cover it in this video as much as possible. Maybe there's a feature I'm not showing you that you would really like to see and we can make it happen. All right, so now it's in available mode. Engine's active. We'll go engine three finally. We'll start her up. Normally you wouldn't fly A340s in VFR at all. <laughs> so this is definitely a true test of the fly-by-wire systems. Definitely uh, would not recommend flying an A340 VFR in real life. Probably would not be the best choice. Probably stick with a Cessna 172 so you can actually see something versus just taking off and hoping that you'll make it. 
Sounds like we're almost ready to leave. Wonderful. Parking brake is set. We'll go ahead and put Stand one by. notch of flaps. View. Let's we'll see if I can get a good shot of those flaps coming down. So I do like that the system with the flaps work really well. Um, they're slow, they're reactive like the model of the A340 is supposed to be. So when you do it, they are supposed to be this slow. I'm glad that Jar modeled that right. Because if these were to come down any faster, I'm pretty sure this plane would just hate me. And there's our tug driver releasing us. Wonderful job. She did a wonderful job. Bravo, bravo. I appreciate her very much. Go back to the internal view here. Forward to the is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Thank you. We'll have a great day. We're going to be doing some VFR. VFR. Oh, I love VFR. We'll get rid of flight director. We don't really need flight director at all. I don't need the airplane telling me what I can and cannot do today. And there she is. She is leaving the premises. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and start our departure. Go ahead and give her some gas. Now the one thing that I really hate are the sounds of the engines a little bit. They don't sound very realistic. Um, there is, I did mention last night that they sounded really good. After reviewing my video and kind of going back into it and, and listening more, I do realize what people were saying, that the engine sounds could use a little work. But like everything with jar design, it's, it's going to be okay. Now when you walk into this cockpit, I do not want you to walk in thinking that this is the A330 disaster all over again. It is definitely far from it, and Jar has come a long way with this A340. He has definitely outdid himself and has made a better impression on the community as a whole. The A330 was a disaster. All right, let's go ahead and take off. Here we go. Now, it's probably going to beep at me because I didn't do any settings in the FMC, but that's going to be okay, and that is from my camera view. That is not from the airplane itself. I'm sorry, guys. That is definitely from my camera view. Turning those things off. Take off here. And we're up. Let's get going. And I am hand flying it, as you can tell. Uh, I, I am hand flying quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and continue on here. As I said before, this is just going to be completely me hand, hand flying the system. I'm not going to let it do anything else. Get rid of auto throttle. We're going to control it ourselves. No need to have someone doing the job for me. Go up to about 4,000 feet or so. I should have shut those off. Pack one and two will turn back on for me here kind of rush through the process of this systems here but th that's okay we're gonna keep her steady Goodyear is roughly in that direction or vicinity I'm pretty sure we can probably see it pretty close oh sorry wrong direction we'll probably see it pretty soon here in fact I'm pretty sure that's it right there We'll go ahead and keep climbing a little bit. Keep flying here. As you can tell, the systems in terms of hand flying are really easy. I have no issues with pitch and 
any control issues here. Like I said, the fly-by-wire system, I can turn really well. So we did do a wonderful design with the fly-by-wire system. We'll go ahead and throw the throttles back. We'll do a couple bank maneuvers here. Wonderful. This plane is operating as it should be. Like I said, everything I'm I'm hand flying it myself. Probably gonna overfly Goodyear, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's I think Goodyear if I remember right. Yeah, Goodyear should be right here somewhere. Where did my airport go? My home airport. <sighs> Wonderful. I lost my home airport. <laughs> I, I I'll find it here soon. It's kind of hard to miss. I'm pretty. All right. Overall, really stable flight. I'm not having issues keeping her steady at all. Sorry, guys. I'm just looking for the airport right now. Should be seeing it by now. Let's see what else, if I can find it again. I might have overflown it. Let's see. Let's turn airports on. Should be having this on, too. Yep, I'm about to overfly it, which means it's right there. Goodyear's right there. That's fine. We'll make the left down win for runway three. And that's we'll overfly the field at 4,400. We'll just go ahead and make the right down, or the left down win for runway three which will take us right over these mountains and then we'll come back at a low altitude as we come in. This will be a touch and go. We're not gonna do a full stop. We're just gonna quickly touch down, take back off and call it good. We'll go on to Scottsdale. Now, like I said, with the controlled flight, like I'm not really having to fight the airplane in terms of keeping it level. The plane is actually pretty smooth at keeping it really level um, with the fly-by-wire system. I don't have to fight it at all. I'm, I have my hand on my yoke, or actually my side stick, I should say, my TCA side stick. I have my hand on it. I'm not really fighting it, not fighting it, not fighting it, and it's doing perfect. Systems-wise, this definitely has been modeled pretty well. Go and give us a little bit of throttle there before we start sinking out of the ocean of the big blue sky. I might have to fight it a little bit because I'm giving it throttle to climb, but that's that's not a big deal. I can handle that. Again, like I said, we are not flying with auto throttle. Everything of my autopilots are off. This is strictly just hand flight even my throttles and so far level my hand is not doing anything I'm not turning I'm not doing anything everything is really level so far fly-by-wire system seems to be working fine and we'll continue forward we're gonna do a turn here, a left turn, and then descend for Goodyear, which is behind us here, for runway three for a touch and go and go on to Scottsdale. So I'll get quite a bit of ways out so I can get some distance between me and the mountains here. We'll go ahead and turn right, and then we'll make a left bank back. Hard left bank.
get us set up. Oh, we're climbing. Don't need to be climbing. Come on, come down just a little bit. See, it's reacting really smoothly with my TCA side stick so far. It is reacting really well. I'm actually really impressed with this system that he has going on here. Climb just a little bit because these mountains are scaring me. For those of you that are new or just joining us, hopefully that you are getting a little bit more of a idea of the Jar Design A340 and its flight characteristics right now. Like I said, I am hand flying it, so it is me doing all the turning and all the pressing and all the ups and downs, lefts and rights. So I should be right on track. Oh, I am back off track. Go ahead and throw landing gear. Like I said, it'll just be a touch and go, so this way we can get on with our day. Yeah, I figured. Hold on. We'll do half. I'm going to mess up this flight really bad right now. I'm going to fly it like a fighter jet. <laughs> here we go. And here's the runway. Pull up just a bit. Come in. And we'll overfly it because I'm going way too fast. And back up. We'll redo the approach. Since that didn't give a good view of what I just did, because I was a bad pilot. Do a left turn out again. Now, A340, 747s, and one other jumbo jet can land at this airport. Uh, 787. So this airport can handle it. My flying skills cannot, apparently. Climbing again. There's the airport. So we'll just head out this direction and we'll come back again to test the systems. Looks wonderful. Everything's good. Like I said, the only downside that I have to this whole plane is not the is the dependent MCDUs. They're not independent, so there's really a design flaw there. But if you are in the market for a heavy with four engines that can run and actually do everything that it's programmed to do, this is definitely the heavy you want. And I'll go ahead and change this up a little bit. I shall give us something to do.
Here we go. This is a better approach, ladies and gentlemen. Give this a shot. At life. Flaps. Flaps. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about what Fly Lua has to say. No flaps. We're doing a touch and go. No real point right now. I got slats out, so it is definitely stable. Here we go. Long landing, long landing. Oof. My passengers are probably cringing right now. Climb back up. Good little touch and go. It was a definite hard landing on my part. Turn back towards Phoenix since Scottsdale is not too far away. As you can tell, I am not struggling at all to do any of this turn. I don't know why that came on. Airbus is known to just take over, it seems like. Actually, you know what? We'll head back to Phoenix. We'll go do a, a landing and full stop in Phoenix, and we'll cover a little bit more about this fly-by-wire system. I'll do an external landing view with you guys as we approach back into Phoenix. Go ahead and go back. See, not that far away. Go ahead and throw three notches of flaps in. Of course, it's going to try to raise itself. We're going to fight it a little bit. Shut that off. I'll lose airspeed. No big deal. Everything seems to be responding really well to what I'm doing. Nothing is responding negatively besides the fact that I'm flying it like an F-18 in a fighter suit it is definitely not meant for that this airplane is definitely a giant commercial airliner and I hope everybody would treat it as such versus my F-18 fly-by-wire skills we'll descend again we'll go ahead and cut it into half And we'll go from there. Here we go. Here comes our landing into Phoenix. Now this is going to be a very short video for you guys. I hope that um, this kind of helps determine for some of you guys what you would like to buy from Jar Design, this A340 is definitely worth it in my eyes. The $60 you pay is well beyond enough. Hopefully with more versions, uh, hopefully he can push out a, my, uh, a 600 series. Though with Tolis coming out with their 600 series, I'm pretty sure that won't happen. But it is finally nice to have a working A340 in a sim that needed it most. I cannot lie. Here we go on final approach into Phoenix. As I said before, guys, the systems on this plane are definitely on par for everything that I would assume is the best in my eyes, according to what I've flown Airbus-wise. Now, JAR, I don't think we can place in the same category as TOLUS. TOLUS has a little bit more in-depth systems. These are very generic. Um, little bit in-depth, a little bit more generic than in-depth. And I don't foresee 
Polis and Jar being the same head to head. Now I am off center, so we'll go ahead and move over a little bit, kind of change our trajectory here. Keep descending. There we go. Into Sky Harbor. Hopefully we get a, a gold landing, ladies and gentlemen. It would be a very good day. Approaching zero eight. Oh, here we go. Approaching. Flaps. Flaps. Oh yeah. You want the final notch of flaps? Sure. Oh, and I'm too low. Gear. Unstable. Unstable. And I forgot to throw the landing gear, like the special person I am. Hopefully we hit four or five green here before I wreck the whole plane. One is down. Two green, three green. Oh, we're golden. We're going to come in a little too high. Flare a little bit. Oh, and a hard landing. Overall, I'm very impressed with this plane. Go ahead and throw that back. Hopefully that gave you a shot of the fly-by-wire systems. I'll go ahead and do a replay of that landing and we can watch how the systems interacted with each other there. Go ahead and put her into a breaking part here and off. Put it in park. Let's go into replay mode here and take a look. Developer. Oh, it's been a while since I've done replay mode. Here we go. If I can find where it was at. Toggle replay mode. There we go. Let's go ahead and... Oop. We won't rewatch that. We'll go relive that. All right. Here we go. Here's an exterior view of the whole f landing. Now, take it from me, you probably don't want your landing gear to come down like 500 feet over the runway like mine was. It's kind of the problem there. So, oh, we're going in reverse. Definitely want to go forward. Here we go. So as you can tell, there's us slowing down. And I'm in complete control, so the pitch is all up to me. Here's me adding more flaps. The fly-by-wire system is responding beautifully to this. The model is not experiencing any sort of like quick reactions. It is definitely feeling like a heavy. And I'm getting about 50 to 60 FPS in here, in this area. And Phoenix is pretty dense for all those that have Sky Harbor. Go ahead and continue to watch. In fact, we can probably watch it like that too. I'm forgetting my landing gear this whole time. I, sh I should have had my landing gear out right here. <laughs> minor mistakes, minor tweaks. And as you can tell, it's responding to my changes in my yoke. She's not, it's not jumping around like some uh, sims I've seen. We get a lot of jumping sometimes in different sims like P3D and, and Microsoft Flight Sim. I've seen some jumping. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is in no comparison to this. Their flight dynamics are completely messed up. Plane I have leveled off really nicely actually. She's coming in pretty, pretty solid here. Except it would be solid if I was heading for a taxiway. That's when I knew I needed to change.
Here's us changing runways, or changing from landing on a taxiway to landing on a runway. And here we go. This is the moment of truth, really, for this airplane. Right in this moment is when I can definitely say I've felt more stressed than solved. Yep, here's where the landing gear caused issues that I forgot to push down. And this will show you just how bad I pitched. Overall, it responded well. Everything responded well. But I did not land in the marker by all means. I landed way too early. I was dropping out of the sky. And I think I tail striked. Ooh, almost tail striked. Pitched way too much. But the systems took care of me. They handled it well. I'm all over the runway. There we go. And that is the replay of a little bit of the exterior fly-by-wire systems that are in this plane. We'll go ahead and just jump ahead here and fix it out of the preview. Take a look one once more here. Again, that's the Jar Design A340. I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend and hope to see you guys again. Have a great one.